There are many aspects. So historically, you know there has been a Draupadi who had five husbands, all right? There… Is, this has been a matriarchal society where in many parts of the country, even today in some parts of the country, it's still practiced that uh, five brothers are married to one woman. These things were done at a certain time and the social situations were such. Or men were married to many more… I mean more than one woman. This was mainly because men died more often than women. Today both men and women are outside, both may get killed, that's different. <laughs> but at that time largely women stayed home because she was continuously pregnant. From the age of fourteen to forty-five, fifty, she's almost all the time either ha she's pregnant or she has a young child. This is how life used to be. So because of that, she stayed home and she took care of the property and the agriculture and stuff. Man went out to do business or for war or something else, he went out. So men always died more often. So generally, in most societies in the past, the number of men was much less than the number of women. Always, this has been the state all across the world. So naturally when so many women were there, they needed care and they needed support in the society and those days a woman could not exist by herself. She… unless she is protected by a male uh, a partner, it would be very difficult for her to exist by herself because she would be exploited in so many different ways. So always they attach themselves. So naturally a man ended up having two, three women because the num… the population ratio was like that. But now largely it's leveled out. If some individual does it, it's not an issue, but if that becomes a social norm, then how do you decide somebody has whatever, multiple wives, and how do you decide somebody has no wife? This will become a social, you know, collision it'll become. It'll become lot of problems in the society because we may act civilized. I'm… I'm very particular, I'm very clear about saying we act civilized. But we, when we are denied basic things that we need, all our civilization evaporates and we will behave… behave like animals. Yes or no? So, when fundamentals are denied, people will go flashing. So, that's not going to work in today's world and above all, the women's condition will become very bad. Those days there was no dirt, if you had land, it was okay. You had five wives, it doesn't matter. You had twenty-five acres, it was good enough, everybody ate well and that's about it. But today our requirements are not just about eating, it's about many things. So that kind of thing will lead to lot of complicated situations in the society. It's better to stick one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, anyway, forever people have been doing their own things beyond the legal relationships. Things have been happening in the societies. That involves a certain risk. Somebody who is willing to take that risk, that's for them. But others will live within the legal format. It's a balanced society. If you are asking this question in a more existential way, well, <clears throat> See, this… this is a certain framework of not just of bone and muscle and flesh, there is a certain energy framework. Only because of that it takes in a certain form. See, if you eat mangoes every day and let's say a cow eats mangoes every day, at some point will you or the cow get confused whether you are a cow or a human being? Or will the cow get confused? Such a thing never happens because there is a clear-cut inner framework to which flesh and blood is added. But there is a framework, an evolutionary memory framework is there, it never gets broken, isn't it? So in this framework, how strong you keep this framework, how, integ how much integrity is there to this energy framework will determine many things about your life, many aspects of your life. Especially if you want to ra raise this life to another level of function, it's very important you maintain this integrity. This is why irrespective of which religion, which spiritual process, if people want to raise them till to a certain point, 
first thing they will talk about is becoming monks or brahmacharis or sannyasis, because the idea is to create such a level of integrity that this is a whole life by itself, that it doesn't lean on anything else for support, either for physical well-being or emotional well-being or psychological companionship, it doesn't lean on anything, it stands by itself because you want to take it somewhere else. If you want normal function, these things are not necessary. Now you want to become a rocket which breaks through a certain dimension of space, now you need to be in a different level of force and integrity, otherwise it'll crack up. So you don't want to open your body to anything and especially opening to multiple partners has its own negativity in that context. How much pain and you look at uh, Draupadi's life, how much volatility, how much pain, how much suffering she went through in her life and how much pain and suffering she caused because of her anger and jealousy and whatever else. So these things happen for a variety of reasons, you can't blame everything on that one aspect, but that aspect also has a, a say in these aspects because you're opening up your uh, memory body, your energy, energetic body which is essentially ruled by memory to variety of memories. This will cause a whole lot of turmoil within the system which could affect that life and many other lives. So Draupati's life is in a way a sample for that.